So South Africa have put themselves into quite a strong position heading into the final day of the second test against New Zealand. Now, uh, it took some excellent batting first and foremost from Calvarena, uh, Kahiso Rabada, Vian Mulder to, to really put South Africa in a strong position, a position that they currently find themselves in. So first and foremost, we'll be chatting about the way they approach their batting. And then obviously, they did well with the ball as well. To get themselves into a, into a decent situation currently, where New Zealand are 94-4-4, for four, they are still trailing by 332 runs. Um, so it's going to be a very, very interesting final day. Let's see what they do and how they go about it. Um, we'll be chatting about what we thought of day four as well as what's going to be happening in day five um so let's see let's see what happens um so first and foremost let's let's chat about the the batting situation and then we'll go into the bowling situation then we'll talk about the the the, the game the final day and what we expect um, but before we get going, before we get started, don't forget to subscribe to Cricket Fanatics Magazine. Don't forget to click that notification bell for all future videos. Don't forget to also subscribe to Cricket Fanatics Magazine monthly. Every issue is 100% free, straight to your inbox every single month. Get involved with a super chat if you want to ask if you want to ask us any questions. And let's get straight into today's video. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Cricket Fanatics Magazine. This is your review slash preview slash daily show. Uh, I'm your host, Khalid Mohidin. I'm joined here by Anno today. Um, I hope you can you hear me, Anno? Is everything good your side? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you perfectly. Perfect. So let's get into today's discussion. Okay, first and foremost, like I said, we'll let's let's speak about it in stages. Um, so I'm, I'm very happy about the situation South Africa found themselves in. Um, to the people that don't know the match situation and what's been happening, um, South Africa chose to bat first and they put on 364 runs thanks to Osaro Iovia century, two forties from um, Dean Alga and uh, Aidan Markham respectively, and then some cameos from the likes of Marco Janssen, Keshav Maharaj and Rassi van der Dessen and Temba Bavuma. Then New Zealand replied... Um, it was 293, particularly Colin de Granum saving them in that particular match. I would say that century was was spectacular the way he approached it, the way he did that. And that's obviously we covered that in all the previous um, games as well. Daryl Mitchell was over the 60, which was an excellent knock from him as well. Then South Africa came into bat, and it was a struggle, um, particularly with the top order once again. Um, they quickly found themselves in trouble at 38 for three. Then Rassi van der Dissen um, scored a 45 and 10 by 23, but it was Calvary and 136 not out that really put South Africa in a strong position. And Cajiso Rabada with a 47 of 34 deliveries, four fours and four sixes, at a strike rate of, a, of 138, which is incredible in test cricket. Um, so I had to mention it, but that's where South Africa are currently sitting. And then with the ball, um, KG Rabada has been world class throughout this tour. Uh, Hanno spoke about it last night that um, if I mean, KG is on form, it's very seldom that South Africa will lose a match. So, two for 17 from KG Rabada and Keshav Maharaj doing well with the ball as well, two for 32, proving that there is some turn in, in purchasing this wicket. Um, so, first and foremost, Hanno, let me chat to you first and get your thoughts. What are your thoughts on the match situation currently? How happy are you of the way South Africa have performed so far? Yes, I'm extremely happy the way that we execute to I don't think our attitude has changed. I think that has uh, been an additional factor the way that we have fielded. Um, and 
conversely so when you saw that New Zealand at their innings, uh, they were a little bit hesitant and they wanted to basically suss whether the pitch has been deteriorating or whether it's actually um, been improving or evened out, which is sometimes the case um, in New Zealand. And uh, uh, long story short is we are dictating terms. We're playing on our, on our game plan as opposed to them bogging us down. They are thriving in a pressure situation, and at this stage, it's a reverse situation. Like I've mentioned, uh, when KG Sansong, Song, you know, it's, it's, um, it's, it's a tough day for an opponent. But now, in addition, KG Sansong Song with a bat as well. I mean, what a cameo uh, for some memories along the campfires after this match. And I mean, even KG even mentioned that he said that um, compared to the first match, and if we have to compare the two matches, um, he specifically said we just did not turn up in that first match. It's as simple as that. Um, he, he said it as simply as that. And that's and that's unfortunate because with the way South Africa is performing in this match, it's a complete contrast to the first match. Like the attitude, the energy, the everything. And it makes you, it, it makes you think that whether they... Whether them speaking about the energy levels, speaking about that quarantine, actually did affect them as players, um, because one, one, two days of of game time and a little rest, and look how South Africa is performing right now, and um, and you have to give them credit in every way. But I have to start with the bat and speak about Calvareno because we have been speaking about Calvareno on the channel for quite some time, speaking about situations and match situations that best suit him and this match situation suited him to the t um if if you had to ask calvarena playing for other teams he would have said it as well he would have said i mean he's told me this on many occasions that when the pressure is on everybody expects you to fail um in situations like this when there are wickets down coming into the situation um with south africa in trouble Everybody expects him to fail, and that's when he performs at his best. And it pretty much looked like that. The way he, he was using his hands and his wrist movements to get the ball through the through the gaps. Um, he was moving his feet a lot this time around. That's something that people were complaining about before. He picked up a way to score runs on this particular pitch, scoring right around the ground. Very delicate, very very precise. Cal Rainer is with his shots. It's not like he's going to come out here and bash the ball all around the uh, around the ground. He plays with precision and, and and timing, and that's that was wonderful to see that he will be a replacement for Quentin de Kock going forward. Hopefully, he's shown that he's had the, the the ability to do so from a run scoring perspective, but it won't be the same um, as Quentin de Kock. It's not going to be the same approach. What did you like the most about Calvarena's approach in this particular match? I know. Yeah. Two hundred or a hundred in each inning and past three hundred, almost directly as a result of that in both innings is, uh, is one hell of an improvement from the past, as we can all agree. So from a performance, it's an an evolution from an individual like Kyle who's enabled us uh, along with Saro out of the first innings to actually put up two competing and pressuring totals on the opposition away from home, and this significant. Um, uh, we've mentioned before, it's only the second time in the last five or six years that we've 300. Now we did it twice in one in one test away from home. And also the first time that we did it against the top five opposition. But coming back to Kyle, uh, I think the way that he went about his business has been very responsible, although very tentative. Um, one other point I wanted to mention is that we spoke about the quality of our domestic scene, whether that is a um, ecosystem or an incubator which is strength, uh, strong enough for us to deliver centurions. And um, I think after Soro and this one hundred, the domestic scene, which I know has been a tremendous debate, we have a second centurion. Um, two swallows not making that our scene is not as bad as we might think it is, 
there's lots stage still, and it's, it's certainly not um, a conclusion to be made. But what I can say is I think the domestic scene is a little bit uh, underrated as, as, as per the current. And um, with Kyle, the way that uh, he started responsible, you see he's a little bit tentative, a three-quarter shot, almost like a, a golfer who's uh, not 100%. And then eventually he became a full shot. That was when he started to express himself, and that's the responsible way. And um, for that, I applaud him, and I'm um, South Africa applaud him. Uh, it's like it's a 91-year proud record in cricket history that uh, Kyle, uh, well, is the person that we can be very thankful for, uh, among a few others uh, that have stood up in this day. Okay, so we got our first caller on in the back end. Um, welcome to the show, uh, Bibek. Uh, what would you like to say, brother? Yeah, thanks. And first of all, I'm uh, really uh, excited about that uh, performance from uh, Kyle Perena. It's really good. The conditions were not that too tough, but the thing is that situation were tough. And the first partnership uh, yesterday morning was really good. Uh, both uh, Mulder and uh, Verena played a really good innings. Mulder got a really good ball. That's the reason probably he got out. Otherwise, he could have also got a big score. But uh, the way Verena played, I have seen, it's like they, he just created the foundation. Later on, KG gave some like uh, salt on the wound. And it's uh, really exciting. And probably, I have also seen in this test match that uh, uh, catching, is really good, improved. Probably Sarel would have uh, taken that particular catch to Conway and then New Zealand uh, would have totally gone out of the question in this particular match. Okay, weather, hope the weather would be good in today's game. Well, for us, it's today for me. Sorry for that because I'm in Canada, so it's only a few hours. So I can see the whole game after my office hours. So it's really good. So hope one and one all in the series and um, hope it would be really good uh, for our WTC championship also. So really looking forward to see that. And yeah, uh, probably another thing uh, would be uh, like to say that um, uh, probably uh, Sarel got 100 in the first innings, but I don't, I'm not feeling that much confident on him because I think he will take a bit more time, but very in the ceilings, I was like probably doubting him after Queenie set a, like already set a benchmark kind of thing, and he just shown him on the same way. I think um, it's uh, it's really it's really good future and good prospect for Sprodis. Yeah. So, so from your perspective, what do you what do you think South Africa need to do or need to prevent doing tomorrow to to get this win under their belt? Because you know they they tend to let things kind of slip. Um, uh, sometimes in the past. <laughs> uh, yeah, only thing I, that I would like to see because uh, we have really, in the first season, we have to see and we have to be a bit more disciplined with the ball and uh, the catching has to be good and we, we should not leak any more run because otherwise New Zealand would have come uh, into the game and Colin Dick Grondom is re in really good form. So we should be aware on that and case will definitely, I think uh, Dean has uh, Dean and team management has plays, uh, played a master stroke over there, just playing uh, case and uh, like first, um, like taking the uh, first batting first while, while uh, winning the toss. I think that would uh, also definitely make a difference. And actually, while I have seen the pitch on the first day, I thought uh, personally it was the right decision because the pitch was browner. It was not like the green is the first one. So I was not like surprised with that decision. And probably, uh, I think the if if South Africa can control uh, the run, they would definitely be on the game. Uh, New Zealand would be totally out of the game. As I'm quite sure. Thanks a lot, Pavi, for coming on the show. I just got to hear your thoughts. So we hope to hear from you very, very soon. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay, thank you. Um, Abai is back in the back end. Let's bring him in. Welcome to the show, brother. So uh, we'll be talking about uh, the, the game the rest of the game, but let's first get your thought process on, on the match. You're somebody um, because you, you've you come in halfway through, so we'd like to hear your thoughts on, on what South Africa did right in this particular um, day of cricket. Yeah, good morning, guys. Yeah, can't complain. The sun is shining, the, the proteas are dominating. Perfect start to the day. Um, anyway, yeah, yesterday I was, I was able to watch um, most, of, most of the day, and uh, 
I, I think it was it was the the first partnership between uh, Kyle Verena and uh, Vian Mulder that kind of set the tone. Um, I, I do understand that uh, the wickets of um, Mulder and Marco Jansen right before lunch may have been a little bit of a pushback, but 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 South Africa were already in a in a pretty comfortable position, should I say, as the lead was um, approaching 300. So, and and when KG Rabada came, I think he, he had a clear plan of what he wanted to do because um, I, I think he uh, he felt like anything beyond 300 would be um, bonus runs. And uh, he he was smacking it all over the park. And that, that too, so effortlessly. So that, that was nice to see. I mean, uh, th- there, has, there has been plenty of discussion about... Um, I guess, lack of intent. And uh, that was soon put to rest. And of course, Kyle Verena bringing up his first test century. And it couldn't have happened at a better time because he had batted uh, eight times and his best score was 30. So it, so both from an individual and a team perspective, this was a much needed innings. Now, if we go to the bowling, um, it was Rabada again making things happen. He did it in the first innings. He did it again in the second innings. And I think it, uh, if we if we go back uh, to our earlier discussions, uh, I know uh, Hanno touched touched up upon this as well as uh, as well as Malcolm from right before the series began, um, stressing the importance of having a spinner. And you saw the two deliveries that got um, Henry Nichols and then Daryl Mitchell out. There actually was noticeable turn, even though there wasn't a whole lot of turn, but you could see that that there was a, that the that the surface was just a tiny bit conducive to spin and uh, and and maharaj was 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 making things happen as well and uh, especially the wicket of daryl mitchell um he and devon conway had added around 60 runs and uh, south africa were kind of looking for that opening to to make um to make to make sure that that an already good day would be even better so that's where i'm going to start yeah, I mean, Keshav Maharaj specifically, um, I know you can talk about the way he uses that straighter delivery, um, how he sets people up for that straighter delivery. Um, I, I mean, from a spinning perspective, it's going to look like a masterclass selecting him. Well, I think not all of us remember uh, Keshav did in the pre-series, um, not just in New Zealand, but in Australia, which was uh, uh, his first uh, well, his debut was against Australia and then going up into the New Zealand series where he actually averages 19, which is better than any other spinner that uh, New Zealand um, has uh, in New Zealand themselves. And I was not surprised. It was an easy for them to say. Look, it's just, it feels like Australasia is made for Keshav's ability. They just is able to dissect a little, a, a little margin here, a little bit there, and a little uh, adjustment from the batsman. That's what he wants to see. You will always see he lets the batsman adjust his stance a bit off the, the few balls, and that's when he bounces. And better of it up front. But that's the genius of the sea. Little minuscule angles that um, is either, uh, either turn or bounce or um, the speed that is able to deliver quality deliveries time and time. So a long story, uh, sorry, my boy just gave me a little bit of a drink, uh, maybe a pre-celebratory um, uh, refreshment. But a long story of this, Kesha has always been understated in character and the way that he is the wind with the wings for our uh, bowlers to pounce. In the absence of a sniper on the other side, he is more than um, just valuable. He is he's literally been the wind beneath the wings for our attack and allowing KG to strike as he does. Because if it wasn't the type of uh, pinpoint accuracy pressure created from Kesha, even if he doesn't take it, we wouldn't see uh, a big eagle KG saw as he's, as he's currently able to serve. Watch out when we take the second new ball tomorrow. KG is going to get another couple in the next couple in his first of us. Hmm. I think what, what makes K- uh, Kesha so smart or so good in those conditions is his ability to think and uh, on the, on the field he's an extremely intelligent cricketer and 
he seems to always get something out of surfaces that don't offer anything for spin, which is something that is very unique to have as a as a bowler in your unit. And that's maybe why Boucher always seemed so confident about having him in the team, even if the spinning conditions aren't there. But we've got another caller. Ashwani, welcome to the show, brother. What would you like to say? Uh, hello. Hello, Khalid. Hello, Hano. Hello, bhai. How are you? Very good, thank you. Yeah, obviously, I am very happy for South Africa. They are uh, come back into this test, and I expected this from South Africa because uh, they are known for their fighting abilities, and they showed it. Uh, coming to Kyle's batting today, I think uh, if we look at uh, Kyle's batting from the past uh, five to six years, he is the most consistent uh, domestic batsman from South Africa. Uh, from the uh, from the West Indies tour where he makes his debut, I think uh, uh, he's a little bit susceptible with this. I think he's not sure about his footwork. But, but I think in this innings, uh, he's a lot more sure about his footwork. Uh, plus, I think he played the ball uh, uh, late, uh, which I saw in his batting. And uh, he's played uh, superbly. And uh, KD, uh, expect from me, he's a world-class bowler. And uh, Mr. Keshav Maharaj, I think Keshav is uh, the what uh, South Africa, uh, he's Australia's, what Australia have uh, for Nathan Lloyd. I think uh, Keshav is to South Africa as well. He's left handed uh, Nathan Lloyd for South Africa. And uh, I, uh, one thing which I want to men mention about Keshav's bowling is I think when he comes to uh, India, uh, where uh, he's not uh, that successful. I think the main reason is that I think Keshav is mostly bowled uh, uh, throughout his career with uh, Kukabura ball. I think uh, Kukabura ball's specialty is I think you have to uh, release Kukabura ball a bit slower than SG ball. I think if he comes to India this time, I think he has to uh, uh, bit uh, uh, I think uh, change his length. Uh, uh, in SD ball, I think if you threw with more force with SD ball, I think it it uh, breaks more. Uh, with Kukabura ball, you have to be deceive uh, deceptive with your length, which I think uh, he is uh, exceptionally good at uh, this. Uh, if you saw his uh, debut match in Australia, where he's uh, bowled uh, in Perth. Uh, I think his best uh, quality is he's deceptive. Uh, uh, with the with the length and uh, i wish him uh, pfeiffer in tomorrow's game and but i think one danger which i uh, looming for south africa is i think if south africa uh, don't take uh, wickets in the first uh, first hour uh, then i think new zealand could do this test as well because uh, normally with the, with the tendency of the kookaburra ball uh, it's don't do that much after the first hour and batting becomes easy. And uh, for uh, uh, South Africa, the danger man will be Conway and uh, uh, Grand Home. Thanks a lot, Ashwani, for coming on the show. We're going to talk about your points again. Thank we'll you. speak to you very, very soon. So I think what the main thing over there is, is that the most important aspect, and Abai, I want to go to you first, is that first session. Um, the... The first session is probably the most important one for for South Africa in this particular match. Uh, it will set the entire tone of where things are going. I hope that South Africa can take those um, maybe two wickets to, in the first session and then finish the game off by T. Um, that would be my ideal um, match situation for me personally. Uh, but they do tend to let things slip Um often and runs get scored unnecessary runs get scored against us when we need to be ruthless so yeah it's our bowlers to win it um they deserve a match where they can actually truly get the celebration um ending in their hands basically if you know what i mean because in other matches there's, there's been games where we chase down to win games this particular game, the celebrations are going to come from the bowlers and every wicket is going to be closer and closer to that win. So we're going to have so many opportunities to celebrate if they can take these wickets. So hopefully that happens. Um, they need to be clinical. They need to be ruthless. They need to be... I want to see attacking, like attacking field set. 
um, people around the batters uh, making it difficult for them to to pick off runs as well. There needs to be a nice consistency with the field. It's going to be difficult um, because to find that best, that basic field to where they can't score runs, but they also have the opportunity to go out is going to be tough for the captain. But I, I hope that this continuously keep pressure on New Zealand going throughout this match. But um, yes, Abai, I want to hear your thoughts about tomorrow and, and what South Africa need to do uh, from, a, from that perspective to win this game. Well, talking about ideally, Khalid, uh, wouldn't you want the wouldn't you want the game to be done in the first session itself? <laughs> well, anyway, yeah, um, as you said, in the first session, a minimum of two wickets um, is is necessary because um, I I don't think the South African bowlers wanted to wanted to go on for too long. I mean, yes, um, if if they can claim all six wickets before the day ends, that's that'll be good. But the earlier, the better, because um, you, you don't want you don't want them the New Zealand batters to to get too comfortable. Um, yeah, I don't think scoring runs uh, is much of a worry. They've got just over twenty percent of the chase, and they've lost nearly half their wickets. So um, it's it, it's it's going to be pretty interesting. I'm, I'm, I mean, especially since there's a new batter along with Conway, Tom Blundell, and uh, and he got out uh, leaving. Uh, leaving a ball that crashed into his off some last innings. I think um, maintaining the tight lines to him and uh, denying scoring opportunities will be key. Um, I see I see Conway losing uh, uh, stable partners at the other end if we're, if we're going to take a bunch of wickets at a time because uh, at least from yesterday, uh, Devin Conway looked pretty well set and uh, he, may, he may score a century. I don't know, but we'll see. That's going to be the main key, I know, is to, to control that. Uh, control them from from feeling like they have an opportunity to win this match. Uh, I think we need to suck the life out of them, ultimately. I think a win is out of the question for New Zealand, if you ask me. I would never say never, with a whole day to go. <laughs> well, what I, from the way I see it, I look and... Uh, See the body language from the players, and one can sometimes decipher whether they are going for a draw that they are defending. And of course, it looks like a bit of a conflict for Conway being defending and playing his own game. And it looks like he's resorted back to a situation where he says, Well, you know what? The reason why I came to New Zealand is because I want to fill my potential for one or other reason. He decided on that, and, um, and well done for him doing well. Um, but that's not the mistake. What I see is I see each coming and an individual. You don't see any type of in the first or maybe even in, in previous tests or in the World Test Championships. It looks more clinical in the sense that everybody must now be individually brilliant. There's no there's no real um, reason why we now need to have game plans and uh, suss out uh, what is going to be the best for this particular session and our tactic going forward. And where I feel some of the needle has been taken out of uh, New Zealand because critically, as an intellectual um, uh, uh, nation and team, they are really astute. So I do not see anybody um, uh, doing well, uh, apart from a few cameos, another grand home, or whatever the case may be, Conway is purely in preservation mode. And by the way, he's very good at it. It's just the case where I I know during the time that the ball is went down, Keshap is getting strong, stronger. And when the new ball is going to be taken, KG will be getting stronger. It's a nice yin and yang. And we are working together as pairs finally. And whereas New Zealand is obviously in the case, I just saying, hey, you know what? Let's just make sure we are not uh, going to uh, uh, embarrass ourselves individually. Mm -hmm. We're gonna have to. We're gonna have to find other wicket taking options, Abai, <clears throat> because if you, if you, what you are saying is true, and there's no way New Zealand can win this match, um, then, and I know you're not saying that necessarily. I know you're not saying that there's no way that they can win it, but I'm saying 
if you if you're going to be look at this match situation and anybody in their right mind would say south africa are the favorites in this particular match currently with the situation that we're in um to to chase down the, the over 300 runs on the last day it's going to be a record chase if they do so if they do manage to do it but the way you sometimes get players to to lose their wickets is by forcing them into shots that get them out i don't think that's going to be a very smart tactic in this particular match because I feel that I don't think New Zealand are in a rush to score runs because if they draw this match, they win the series and there's the points in their bag. So ultimately, they are quite comfortable, I feel, from that perspective. We're having Conway there and having an actual batter with him at the crease and not, not just a, a lower order weak, uh, no, lower order batter or a weaker batter at the crease. It's an actual proper batter in at the crease at the, uh, with him. And yes, he might have lost his wicket in the way that he did, but he still is a proper batter. And we're going to... We're going to have to bowl really, really well to get these wickets and win this match because there is no other option for South Africa but to win this match. You know, if, if I was Dean Elgar, I'd, I'd ask myself this question. Um, how, how do I get people out? Do I invite the error or, or, do, I just, or do I just keep um, the tight lines um, as, as a bowling unit? And uh, considering the position right now, 91 for four, you're not going to get a whole lot of luck if you try to invite the error from from New Zealand batsmen because they're now fully aware of the fact that the that the main priority at this point in time is to save the game, and uh, they're not going to take any unnecessary risks. Now, on the other hand, if it was let's say 91 for one, then 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 I probably would have said, okay, the the Kiwis may have a little bit of a chance to uh, uh, possibly win this game, but I I think it, I think given this stage. Um, the the best they're going to think of doing is is to save the game. Um, I guess when it comes to the bowling, um, Rabada has been impressive. Um, Maharaj has been uh, steady and, and impressive as well. I want to see more consistency. Well. Huh? I think Rutus Pamela has been excellent as well. Um, just with his consistency. Yeah, he 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 did an all right job last innings. Um, I, I guess he was a, a touch unlucky. Um, given the fact that he didn't take any wickets, but I, I, I want I want to see him maintain this the, the sort of consistency, and I think he he will be among the wickets. He'll finally get um, he'll finally get rewards for um, uh, for persistence, um, and and of course uh, the first spell from Rabada and Janssen side by side will be uh, will be very crucial because these are the two guys that have that have starred in the previous innings: five for Rabada, four for Janssen. Um, if if South Africa are going to take early wickets, these this pair of fast bowlers are the go-to guys. But also uh, one more, um, I want I want to see Vian Mulder um, bowl well. I know I know he can he can make things happen. Um, even he hasn't been so lucky, but I think uh, he deserves a fair chance too. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys. I think that's that's enough um, for for today's show. I think we we've covered basically everything. Um, I'm just going to touch on a little bit on Calvarena's presser. Um, he spoke about how he's worked his whole life and how hard he's worked for te to play Test cricket. He's worked to play Test cricket his whole life. I think that was some excellent points that he made. I think another excellent point that he made as well is the fact that he gave credit to the likes of Ashwell Prince, um, saying that his whole franchise career was playing under Ashwell Prince. And he does thank Ashwell Prince for the influ influence he's had on his batting. Um, he said he had a massive impact on the way I bat. I give a lot of credit to him. Um, he, he explained his, his, his mindset going into day four. He said, last night was quite a tricky period for myself and Vian this morning. The plan was to bat 30 minutes and then look to show intent, um, which is good. Um, the way he played was one of the big and then he said about Rabada's performance the way he played was one of the big factors in the energy we took into our bowling so that's also a nice thing to know that the bowlers take confidence into their bowling um, when they're batting as well you know in, if they if they're bowling next in the team environment the coaches senior players uh, I've never made have never made to feel like I'm Quinny's replacement um, from the next day they've given me the support that it's that it's um, that it's my spot. So that's very good that the, the team have have given Kyle the assurances that he, that that the wicket keeping position is his spot, and he just needs to continue performing to get it there. Um, so I think that's exceptionally important to give a player the confidence needed going into the match. 
Um, so yeah, um, I think that's about that's about um, it for that. Let's read. Let me just read some of the comments out before we 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 go. It's very difficult for me to see where to start. That's why I always ask you guys to get involved with the super chats. Um, but I'll read some of the some some comments. Um, uh, yeah, um, I'm gonna look at I'm gonna look at some of it. So the the point, the reason why you get the super chat is because these li the the live chat it gets so busy, and we don't get to see everything throughout the show, and then they go missing. So for me personally, it would be the best thing for you guys to get involved with the super chat, so I can actually see your comments and not miss it. Um, so yeah, when will the Bangladesh series be? And um, the when will the Bangladesh ODI squad get announced? Um, I don't think anytime soon at the moment until this game is done. Uh, I think then we can start thinking about that. Uh, Supercars is pretty much tied up at the moment, I feel. Um, so I don't think uh, they're going to send out anything very um, anytime soon. Um, let's look. Let's look at more. Um, what about that crazy catch? Um, of Will Young, I think it was an, a, a magnificent piece of field, fielding um, to remove Marco Janssen, unfortunately. And Marco was looking good as well. He hit that ball quite hard. And I know how hard he can hit that ball. He, he hit the ball at me in the nets uh, at, for Durban Heat. I was standing at the back and I looked to the left and all I heard was was duck and then a bah at the back of the nets and I turned around and the ball it's just like it, like about here. <laughs> I wasn't looking at all. Uh, so, and I heard how hard he hit that ball. You could hear the impact. So he is a pretty lethal striker of the ball. Um, so yeah, excellent catch, I have to say. Um, let's go on to some other comments over here. Um, so Pamela bowled good line and length. I agree. Um, he was very economical. Um, and here's one from Lorenzo. Uh, it's for you, a buy. Um, Alga should keep it simple, attack the stumps, and target those pads. So Pamela showed how you bowl against Conway. Uh, you give him nothing. But bowling short to Conway is absolutely ridiculous. And it's 100% true. I agree with that. Spitting facts right there. Spitting facts right there. Yeah. 100% they need to keep a good line and length, keep the pressure on New Zealand, make sure that they play, uh, that they have to play at every delivery. Um, that is the main thing. There's no such, uh, I just think that that's how South Africa should approach us and, and, and have an attacking field. Um, uh, so, yeah, guys, thanks a lot for tuning in. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to smash the like button, comment, share, subscribe, click the notification bell for future videos. Don't forget for tomorrow's um, review, we would like you guys to get more involved with the Super Chat, etc., and get your questions asked. Come on the show and have your say so that we can get you guys more involved. It's very difficult for me to keep track of all the comments. So please get involved, even if it is just one one well, one rand that you that you give us um, for a Super Chat, just to make sure that we can read out all of, you, all of your, your questions. And also, don't forget to also um, make sure that you come to our Friday Q and A sessions because that's your opportunity for you to ask us questions. And no matter what, whether you provided with a super chat or not, it's an opportunity for you guys to ask us all questions that you want, and we will answer them. So thanks a lot for tuning in. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Don't forget to smash the like button. Don't forget to comment. Don't forget to share. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to click that notification bell for all future videos. Don't forget to subscribe to Cricket Fanatics Magazine monthly. Every issue is one hundred percent free, straight to your inbox every single month. Without fail, click the link on the screen or in the description. Every issue, including all back issues, is free. If you guys want to know what the latest issue is currently, it is the Women's World Cup edition. So go ahead and check it out. This is the front cover of the magazine. So go and get your latest issue of Cricket Fanatics magazine. I know. Bye-bye. Thanks a lot for coming on the show. To all the rest of the guys out there, we'll see you guys again tomorrow with another review show. Um, take care. Enjoy the last bit of the cricket. Excuse me, everybody.